country. This will avert more than 50,000 child deaths annually. Honorable Speaker, I have provided 35,000 crores of rupees for COVID-19 vaccine in this year 21-22. I am committed to provide further funds if required. So the budget outlay for health and well-being is 2,23,846 crores in this BE 21-22 as against the BE of only 94,452 crores and it marks an increase of 137 percentage. The details of the same are at Annexure 1 of the speech. Even at the outset, I would like to say that the investment on health infrastructure in this budget has increased substantially. Progressively, as institutions absorb more, we shall commit more. Taking a holistic approach to health, we focus on strengthening three areas, preventive, curative, and well-being. Health systems. A new, new centrally sponsored scheme, PM Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana, will be launched with an outlay of about 64,180 crores over six years. This will develop capacities of primary, secondary and tertiary care health systems, strengthen existing national institutions and create new institutions to cater to detection and cure of new and emerging diseases. This will be in addition to the national health mission. The main interventions under the scheme are support for over 17,000 rural and 11,000 urban health and wellness centers, setting up integrated public health labs in all districts, and 3,382 3, block public health units in 11 states, establishing criti critical care hospital blocks in 602 districts and 12 central institutions. Strengthening of National Center for Disease Control, its five regional branches and 20 metropolitan health surveillance units. Expansion of the integrated health information portal to all states and UTs to connect all public health labs. Operationalization of 17 new public health units and strengthening of 33 existing public health units at points of entry, that is, at 32 airports, 11 seaports, and 7 land crossings. Setting up of 15 health emergency operation centers and 2 mobile hospitals. And setting up of a national institution for One Health, a regional research platform for WHO, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia region office, nine biosafety level three laboratories, and four regional national institutes for virology. Nutrition. To strengthen nutritional content, delivery, outreach, and outcome, we will merge the supplementary nutrition program and the portion beyond and launch the Mission Portion 2.0. We shall adopt an intensified strategy to improve nutritional outcomes across 112 aspirational districts. Universal coverage of water supply. The World Health Organization has repeatedly stressed the importance of clean water, sanitation, and clean environment as a prerequisite to achieving universal health. The Jal Jeevan Mission Urban will be launched. It aims at universal water supply in all 4,378 urban local bodies with 2.86 crores household tap connections as well as liquid waste management in 500 Amrit cities. It will be implemented over five years 
with an outlay of 2,87,000 crores. Today, India has two vaccines available and has begun immediately safeguarding not only her own citizens against COVID-19, but also those of 100 or more countries. It has added comfort to know that two or more vaccines are also expected soon. Honourable Prime Minister launched the vaccination drive by crediting and thanking our scientists. We are ever grateful for the strength and rigour of their efforts. Even as a large section of citizens stayed home, milk, vegetables, food suppliers, health and sanitary workers, truck drivers, railways and public transport workers, bank employees, electricity workers, our Annadatas, police, firemen and the armed forces all had to go about their work as normal, but with the additional anxiety of the virus hanging over them. We recognize this, and I think I speak on behalf of everybody in this august house when I express my heartfelt gratitude to these men and women for how they were able to carry out their work and duty to provide for the nation's basics over those crucial months. Speaker, sir, the public, for public good, honourable members of parliament and members of legislative assemblies too offered their salaries. In May 2020, the government announced the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package to sustain the recovery. Further into the year, we also rolled out two more Atma Nirbhar packages, two and three. Total financial impact of all the Atmanirbhar Bharat packages, including measures taken by the RBI, was estimated to be about 27.1 lakh crores, which amounts to more than 13% of our GDP. As a government, we kept a watch on the situation and were proactive in our responses. The government, led by the Prime Minister, stretched its resources to deliver for most vulnerable sections of our society, the poorest of the poor, the Dalits, the tribals, the elderly, the migrant workers and our children. The Pradhan Mandri Garib Kalyan Yojana, the three Atmanirbhar packages and announcements made later were like five mini budgets in themselves. We are all reminded time and again that our fight against COVID-19 continues into 2021. Now, just as it happened after the two world wars, there are signs that the political, economic and strategic relations in the post-COVID world are changing. This moment in history is the dawn of a new era, one in which India is well poised to truly be the land of promise and hope. I borrow the words of Rabindranath Tagore, Faith is the bird that feels the light and sings when the dawn is still dark. Faith is the bird.